Hello, everybody, and welcome back to OMB Reviews. I am the critic who is a cynic. Hope you're doing well, and today we'll be doing a box office preview for this weekend, which sees the third weekend release of The Batman, as well as new films like The Outfit Uma, or Uma, I don't know exactly how to pronounce that, uh, Korean for uh, mom, and a couple other things. So before we go any further, though, into these news items and box office projections, please make sure that you smash that like button, light up that fire button if you're watching over on Odyssey, and also make sure that you are subscribed to the channel with that bell notification turned on, that way you know every time a video or live stream goes live on the channel. So... We're looking at the third weekend now for the box office. Not sure exactly why they have it listed as the second weekend range, but this is indeed expected to do quite well in its third week of release. Go ahead, just update this just to make sure that they... Nope, they did not fix it, so <laughs> go ahead and stick with the original then. And they project for the third weekend of its release for the Batman to make between 40 and $48 million. So again, pretty strong hold there for the film. Film is well on its way to breaking even by the end of its weekend and definitely moving into the the profitability territory. It is also getting its release in China this weekend, so we can expect some money coming out of that. What also means is that money will be going to the Chinese Communist Party, and that is always an evil, wrong thing to do. We also have uh, Jujutsu, uh, uh, Jujutsu Kaizen Zero, the movie. Uh, I think it's based off of a manga anime, uh, so don't really have a lot of knowledge about that, but for something that <laughs> is probably not well known amongst Western audiences, 8 to 13 million seems like a, a pretty strong uh, number there. The Outfit is a newer film, to me at least, uh, that I just heard about the other day, thanks to Laura, the modern major general story, for, for pointing that out to me um, with... Uh, Dylan O'Brien, and it actually kind of looks interesting because of that casting, uh, as well as Mark Rylance in the film as well, and I just really like him in a lot of the roles that he does. I actually got to see him on stage on Broadway, and just he's a very talented actor, so always like to see him involved in this. He's been in probably the biggest film that most people have seen uh, was that he was in Bridge of Spies, uh, and he got some Oscar you know contention for that, um, and he did a very good job. So I actually am interested in the film because of Dylan O'Brien and because of him being in that film. And then you have the horror film Uma or Uma. Uh, this is a South Korean or just a Korean film as being as how it's listed. I'm assuming it's got the South Korea film, South Korea horror film, and so I imagine that this is probably uh, pretty terrifying as uh, they tend to do films very, very well out of South Korea. Looking at the Batman, you can see that the projections, the average projection for this weekend in its third week of release is around $44 million, meaning that they expect the film to make $307.6 million. So easily passing up the $300 million domestic mark there, being a 34% drop from week two to week three. So that's a very, very strong drop, uh, rather very strong hold uh, for that film. And it's really not all that surprising because when you look at it, the film does not really have any competition. Uh, as I mentioned before, you've got you've got Uma, you've got The Outfit. You also have this A24 limited release or this, it's this A24 film uh, X, which is getting released around 3,000 uh, theaters, so, so maybe not so limited of a release there. So you're really not having a lot other than the Funimation uh, Jujutsu Kaisen, but that's going to be for a very specific audience, coming out of respectable around 2,500 screens there. Uh, so really no competition, which is why the film is probably holding as strong as it is and is going to easily pass the $500 million worldwide mark uh, as of this weekend. Uh, Jujutsu is expected to make around $10.5 million, so that is going to be pretty, uh, pretty good, pretty respectable for that film, especially in a Western audience audience. Again, this is the domestic totals here. Uncharted is expected to also have another strong hold, a 14% drop for about $8 million, bringing its domestic total to 125.3. And Dog, still hanging around there. Uh, so definitely a film that, uh, out of all the films that are available early on, I think this is, might be the only film I might have a chance to go see today, uh, just because of the way that the timings are working. Uh, and so it's nice to see that this little film is, is doing quite well. Uh, again, it's always nice to see films about about dogs, you all know how I feel about my dogs. I got my my own hounds of Asgard who are actually being very quiet this morning, uh, very surprisingly. So uh, you all know that that's probably a film that you know I'm probably gonna have some bias towards because of that reason. Spider-Man No Way Home is still expected to come in the top five though, with another 3.8 million dollars, a six percent drop. But as you can see, it is definitely I can say for for a fact now it will pass 800 million dollars easily, especially if these numbers hold uh, by the end of even just the next weekend, uh, not this weekend, but the following weekend. 
Uh, this will have easily passed $800 million domestically, pushing it ever closer, not only to you know being past this number, but also ever closer to $1.9 billion worldwide. So uh, very impressive numbers here. And again, this film is just doing bonkers numbers there. X from A24 is expected to make $3.3 million in its debut. I'll have, of course, some breakdowns of these movies later on when I'm able to find and look up some budgets for those movies. Uh, Death of the Nile is still hanging around as well. So even though the drops have been pretty strong because of a very weak opening, this film is still not on any track to make any money whatsoever. Sing 2 still hanging around as well. Pretty impressive for being out about as long the same time as Spider-Man No Way Home. And you think about it, it's like Spider-Man No Way Home. Okay, I could see why this film would still be around, why it would still be making a lot of money, why people would still be going to see it. The sequel to Sing... Again, apparently enough people, enough families have found some interest in it. Uh, Focus Features has the outfit, uh, $1.3 million uh, as far as being at around 1,300 screens. So I would say that's a you know pretty respectable number just for being at the limited number of screens that it is at. But we'll have, of course, to look at the budget of the film because I imagine the budget probably not too low. Uh, so it probably still needs to make quite a bit more to get its break-even point. And then from Sony Pictures distributing this film from Korea, Uma, uh, expect to make around 900000 But at being at only 805 theaters. That seems to be pretty darn good. Speaking of Uma, as you can see here, it's a film directed by Iris Shim, so don't really know much about it, but it's a 2022 uh, American supernatural horror film written, directed. Okay, so it is American. Uh, it means mom in Korea. Uh, it stars Sandra O. Oh, uh, so Sandra O oh, there, uh, Fievel Stewart, Fievel Stewart, and some other people as well. Uh, Sam Raimi serves as a producer on the film. The film was released March 18th, 2022 by Sony, uh, has received mixed reviews. It talks about a Korean immigrant. Okay, so I, I, I correct that. This is an English, this is an American release, uh, just featuring a lot of, uh, I, guess, I guess, assuming um, all of them are Korean actors and directors and writers. It says a Korean immigrant, Amanda and her daughter Chris, live on a rural farm, raising bees and living without modern technology. When Amanda receives the cremated ashes of her deceased estranged mother it is it unleashes a vicious spirit intent on taking her body for itself Oof, that sounds creepy uh no thank you at all but anyway this is an american release my bad for earlier i uh, just seemed based off of everything that i was seeing with this film that it was going to fit that category but uh, it is american release the outfit is an american crime drama directed by graham moore and as i mentioned before uh, it is going to be starring mark rylance who i again think is a very talented actor uh, also zoe dutch who i think is very talented as well and then dylan o'brien so really it's for me right mark rylance and dylan o'brien that are ones that are make me most interested in this film overall no no projected budget projected budget on this film so we'll have to wait and see just you know if it's going to need to rely on anything as far as any money but it does have a pretty good uh, mixture of people so not only do you have a director who has been you know in oscar contention before for his film the imitation game which i didn't think was the best story but it was definitely a well-crafted film i'm looking at some of these things and i'm looking at the cinematographer there obviously i know everyone's like oh man look at his name dick pope but uh he actually is a very talented cinematographer i remember his work for the illusionist and uh mr turner especially even though the film was long and it dragged a bit it was beautifully shot uh so this film likely will be the same and then also you have a score by Alexandre Desplat, who is very, very well known uh, for his scores. So this I, it's kind of weird to me that this film is not getting a, a wider release. Uh, then again, it is being put out by Focus Features, and so they're a little bit of a smaller company, so that might make the reason or might explain the reason as to why that is the case. Batman, though, as again we pointed out before, will cross $300 million domestically as of this weekend, which will by itself push this film past the $500 million mark. So just from the domestic market alone, this film will hit its break even and also go into the profitability territory. We can imagine that it'll have another strong international showing in addition to the money that it'll get from the Chinese Communist Party from China. Uh, which, again, will also go to fun human rights violations. But for the film itself, I'm sure that Warner Brothers will still be happy. As we look at the numbers as of today, with $484.2 million being reported, the film is right now sitting at around $9.4 million in losses. And so, as I mentioned, this will be easily uh, surpassed as of this weekend, and it'll hit that uh, profitability territory. So we'll have that breakdown uh, later on this weekend once all of those numbers come in. We'll also have a another video coming out tomorrow talking about and looking ahead to some projections for some upcoming films that are set to come down the road. So what are y'all's thoughts about this? Do you think the Batman 
is going to be able to uh, easily pass the $500 million mark. I think it's pretty much a sure thing at this point. But I guess the more interesting question would be, uh, are you excited to see Jujutsu uh, Kaisen Zero? Like, is that something that you are into? Is that something that I should maybe check out? Let me know. Uh, also, have you seen Uncharted or Dog? And Dog is probably the one that I'm most likely to want to go see. Uh, I've seen Uncharted. I've seen The Batman. Um, I don't know enough about Jujutsu uh, Jujutsu uh, Kaisen to really say one way or another. Uh, X, I, I saw some basic images for it, and it didn't look like it was really my kind of, of movie. Uh, that's just, again, my, my own personal thought on that. We'll go ahead and just uh, pull this up so that way we have uh, uh, some uh, mindset here. Let's see if we have X film, if this is the, the right one. doesn't look like it is the right one. Again, that's when an issue comes up when you have a film that's a single letter, is that it, it kind of, you know, makes you say, well, you know, how am I how am I going to look this up? Let's see. X-2022. There we go. So American, yeah, definitely doesn't seem like my kind of film. As it says, American erotic slasher film directed by Ty West. Film stars Maya Goth, Jen Ortega. Uh, world premiere at South by Southwest. Uh, film crew arrives at a, a secluded farmhouse in Texas to shoot a certain movie. The leering interest of their host, a reclusive elderly couple, turns violent as night falls. Again, does not seem like my kind of film. Interesting that this film is getting released at over 3,000 theaters. Again, of all the films, A24 for you to put out and to have this many. Uh, again, that's kind of odd to me. I look at the outfit. And I think, oh, this actually seems interesting. I look at, oh, man, I'm like, I don't like horror films, but at least that seems interesting. And yet this is the one that's getting a much more wide release. So uh, we'll, of course, have to wait and see exactly how the film is able to do. And uh, no production budget reported yet for that film either. So let me know your thoughts about that. And anything else I mentioned in the comment section down below. If you like this video, smash that like button, not at that fire button over on Odyssey. Y'all are all amazing and beautiful people. Hope you all have a wonderful rest of your day. And as always, God bless. And now for a huge shout out to all of my March Patreon subscribe star and locals members. Starting off first with my Patreon members, animation commentator, Brandon, let's go Brandon, Brian P, Christopher Bowman, Father Christopher Miller, hail to you Father, Father Damian Cook, Fuzz Aldrin, Garrett Searles, Hannibal Grimm, Harold Francis, Hymir Ari Hymason, Inflamed Wood, Jacob Juice, Jeff Toon, Joe Horn, Jonathan Carney, Gomer Kyle 79, Laura, The Modern Major General Story, Mike Jackson, Mad Mitch Dunaway, Mondo Spieler, Mr. Peabody, On to June, Orange Chat Reviews, Out of Step with Reality, Rosetta Allen, Stan Andrian, Miss Martin Muses, Theodore Benden, Tina Bojan, and of course, Tina B, the Empress of the Universe. Also, a shout out to my Subscribestar members, starting off with Trent Johnson, Matt317, UAB Mad Dog, Mike Jackson, Storm Tracker, The R, Nosferatu Gatsu, Stan4, John B, Mr. Roy, Glinzer, J. Alex McCarthy Jr., Dean Heiss, Slash, the new number two, Jera, the beer guru, and ZK Man, and a final shout out to my locals members, Kara Tharp, UAB Mad Dog, Mike Jackson, and Robert Barnes. And lastly, a huge shout out to my newest locals member, Brett D90. Thanks, man. Thank you all so very much for being supporters, monthly supporters of the channel. And if you want your name shouted out at the end of every single live stream and every single video, please check out the pinned, uh, rather than the pinned, the, the, the very top link in the video description. It is noted as the Willow link there. It'll bring you to... Uh, uh, basically a link uh, tree of all the different places that you can support on Patreon, Subscribestar, or on Locals. And also there are other tiers that you can get access to as well, including an Army of Asgard level where you get not only the shout out, but you also get access to a giveaways channel that I have on my Discord where you get uh, offers of giveaways, or rather you get access to giveaways of 4K titles, Blu-rays, uh, digital codes, all kinds of stuff, steelbooks. It's just, uh, I'm giving away stuff all the time over there, and it's a lot of fun as well. So go check that out if you're interested. There's also the Keeper of the Bifrost level, which is the higher level up than that, and you get all everything from the previous tiers. Plus, you get access to a once or twice a month podcast that I do with John the Flick Pick Flickinger, where you get to ask us Q&A, right? You get to ask us questions, uh, any question that you like, uh, movie or non-movie related. We will answer them uh, once, maybe twice a month. Uh, we're trying to work on a second opportunity for us to, to have a show, but right now it's 
Bifrost at least once a month. So again, you get access with that with the Keep of the Bifrost level. And then there is the Chosen of Valhalla level, the very premium level where you get access to all of those things. Plus, you get to be featured on the channel once a month with me and the other Chosen members where we talk about movies and, and, and stuff. Anything really that the Chosen want to talk about. And it's always a very fun discussion. We usually have about three, three and a half hour discussion. So again, that's what you get access to at the Chosen of Valhalla level. Also, you get a free t-shirt during your first month. All you need to do is just let me know uh, what t-shirt you want from the store and also their size, location, etc. And I send those out anywhere in the world. Anyway, you guys are all amazing and beautiful people. Thank you all so very much again for your love and for your support. Have a wonderful rest of your day. And as always, God bless.